going green. The Biden regime rolling out new electrical vehicle mandates for semi-trucks. This on the heels of another rule aimed to have a majority of passenger vehicles that they have to be electric or hybrid by 2032, despite EVs currently making up less than 1%. Of all heavy-duty trucks nationwide, EPA's new rule will require electric models to account for 60% of new urban delivery trucks, 25% of long-haul tractor sales by 2032. The, the, the green news scam continues. Here with their expertise, founder and CEO of the American Energy Institute, Jason Isaac. Also with us, Newsmax columnist Lauren Fix. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Jason, let's start off with you first. While all this is going on, Biden is refusing to refill the strategic petroleum reserves he drained, you know, to boost his, his numbers, right? To, it's all about votes. It's now at the lowest level it's been in four decades. And because oil is now too expensive, so it's in order to refill the, the oil reserve, you have to buy oil at a higher price. He emptied the stockpile two years ago to drive gas prices down right before the midterms. And now our current supply is less than, uh, it's going to last us 20 days. The whole point, talk to everybody about why it's so important for us to have a strategic oil reserve, especially when we have the number one state sponsor of terrorism, you know, Iran, saying that they're going to conduct a retaliatory attack. Yeah, I'll start with the good news first. The good news is that there's not a strategic petroleum reserve that Biden can weaponize and use as a, a political tool come October to try to boost his reelection chances and lower the cost of energy. That's not going to happen. Unfortunately, Americans are going to be the ones suffering with more expensive energy because his administration continues to target the producers of American energy, namely those that produce oil, gas, coal, and unfortunately nuclear energy as well. And Iran is benefiting $5 billion a month is flowing from China to Iran for their oil because the Biden administration is turning a blind eye on those sanctions. China is now exporting energy, something that has been unheard of in the past. They're now exporting jet fuel, diesel, and home heating oil to people around the world, flooding the market with it, and unfortunately funding terrorism. It's incredible. We have all of this oil right under our feet. And, and meanwhile, Lauren, we, our gas prices, they're going up again. And when the price of gas goes up, anything you transport, that's going to go up. The current average now stands at three fifty nine a gallon. That's up 20 cents from just a month ago. Uh, you know, the average, of course, before Joe Biden came into office, it's, hard, it's, it's like, wow, I can't believe it's a lifetime ago. Two dollars and thirty eight cents. Uh, what's it going to take for Americans, Lauren, for for them to wake up that this is this is basically all a scam and that all Joe Biden is doing is bowing down to his radical base? Well, I've been calling this up for like 10 years and I've had every car manufacturer give me a lot of pushback, believe me, um, because I review cars and I cover the industry. And, and they ask me all the time, especially off camera, you know, what do you think? And I said, this is not good for anyone. This, uh, this electric car, you can call it a scam if you wish. They're building the cars the best they can with what they have. The biggest problem is it's not the cars. It's the infrastructure. There's no place to charge. The range is not far enough. Consumers don't realize the cost of the vehicle on average is $66,000. And then you look at the cost of a regular gasoline car. car is now up at $50,000. The price of gasoline is going to get more expensive as we put these summer blends into play. And then, of course, we know they don't want us to drill. Like you said, the SPR, they're trying to drain that down. And maybe they can't refill it, which is not a good thing because we have about 17 days worth right now. I really am concerned because if we continue down this path of all going green, we're going to be back to candles, which they don't want you to light, and dial phones because they don't want you to use our cell phones to charge. And we have this problem already in Europe where they said, oh, we're going to go all green. We're going to go all green. They don't have enough heating energy. They, they tell you not to download your videos in HD, but to do it in SD. They don't want you to use your washer and dryer. It is amazing how many different things they tell you not to do, including charge your car which is going to be a problem because this is really all about control. This is not necessarily about going green, although they say that on the surface. Just read what the World Economic Forum says in their statement, word for word on their website. They're telling you, we want you to go green, and then we're going to start taking away your privileges, and then you won't have anything. Right. They're going after, uh, you know, ovens here in New York City. They're doing all these crazy things, mm -hmm. just, just jacking up the prices on everything. You know, Jason, I want to pivot back a little bit to Iran, what you talked about, the $5 billion a month uh, that they're getting thanks to Joe Biden. The world is anticipating retaliatory attack due to an Israeli airstrike that killed two top Iranian officials. 
those coffers for, for Iran, they've been enriched, you know, I mean, by Joe Biden declaring war on the fossil fuel industry. How, how devastating is this? I don't think people have, have made the connection. But we all know that on day one that Joe Biden came into office, he, he, he shut down that Keystone pipeline and he's been strangling the fossil fuel industry ever since. Well, you're right. They're not making the connection. And it's all about going green, but it's really leading to going gangrene, if you will, because people are freezing to death in their homes. I mean, I, I joke, but it's seriously happening. And they're not making the connection because they're getting disconnected. Between 2021 and 2022, there was a 30% increase in people in the United States who had their electricity disconnected, a 76% increase in people who had their natural gas disconnected from their home. So you're not able to heat your home or cook your foods or wash your clothes. This is the movement that, you know, Obama said it perfectly necessarily skyrocket. Your electricity and energy costs will necessarily skyrocket. Well, they're skyrocketing, and it is certainly not necessarily. We need to be producing more energy in this country, getting it to our friends around the world. We need to prove these LNG export terminals so that we can get back to producing fertilizer. You know, the fertilizer that helps grow food that we depend on, over 70% of the fertilizer plants in the European Union are offline because they don't have access to the feedstock. The Biden administration is continuing down this path of targeting American energy that we produce more responsibly than anywhere else on the planet. Lauren, before I let you go, we have about a minute left. Is it a fallacy that electric cars are better for the environment? We know that they get uh, a lot of the materials from China, the Uyghur Muslims, right, that are enslaved by the CCP. How is this better for our world, better for humanity? It's not better for our world, and they are absolutely not green. In our business, we call that cradle to grave, from the raw materials to the end life and what we do with all the components afterwards. And if you look at it, the electric vehicles are not greener. They, like, you, like Jason said, they're like gangrene. And unfortunately, we're starting to see solar panels stack up. You've got windmill panels standing up. And all of this is all about control, increasing our electric costs. And I'm telling you, and we all know this, this is not a good thing. It's going to cost us a ton of money. And to get out of it, we're going to have to go back to drill, baby, drill. And I'm, I don't work for the fossil fuel industry, but I'm telling you, this is the only way we're going to get out of this mess. And it's going to get much worse before it gets better. It's unbelievable. They shut down a nuclear power plant where I live in my county. And ever since, we're seeing our, our utility bills skyrocket. I mean, one, one of my friends told me that her utility bill is higher than, than even her mortgage. It's low. I mean, it's incredible what's going on. And we didn't even have a really uh, bad winter. Uh, Jason, Isaac, Lauren Fix, thank you guys so much for joining us. Y'all great. Thank Thanks for having me on. Have you ever thought, why in the world is my wireless bill so darn high? What are we paying all this money for? Speed, coverage, data, access to 5G, unlimited talk and text, mobile hotspots? We are partnering with Mint Mobile. Mint Mobile offers all of these features for as low as $15 per month. They're reimagining the wireless shopping experience and made it easy and online. No stores, no salespeople, just huge direct-to-you savings. Why should you pay more when you have access to premium wireless? Mint Mobile runs on the nation's largest 5G network. Whether you use your phone to watch YouTube, listen to podcasts, or play games, you get the same speed and performance as the big guys while connecting to Mint's network. How hard is it to switch your service? Big Wireless wants you to think it's hard, but switching to Mint is super easy. Thanks to digital e-SIM cards, which most phones now have, you can sign up and activate immediately right on your phone from the comfort of your home. And if your phone doesn't have an e-SIM, Mint will ship you a new SIM card for free. Just go to trymintmobile.com slash Lauren Fix, also linked in the description down below, to get premium wireless for $15 a month.